Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Uh, today I'm going to be working on doing a kit build in this uh, video blog and uh, hopefully I can get uh, most of it done today and uh, not all, if not all, and uh, get it posted. And uh, this is for you folks who've never tried building a kit before. Um, I'm going to be building an Intermountain Railway um, cylindrical, uh, cylindrical four bay hopper car farmland co-op. I was able to score a dozen of these kits on eBay oh maybe about three years ago and I think these normally retail for $13.95 and I got them for something like eight so um, I thought okay I'd never done an end scale kit build before and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of kits out there for end scale cars just probably because of the size and it's a, it's a little fussy trying to get this together but uh, if you can sit and hang tough and watch me fuss with an end scale car and you do HO scalers then you shouldn't have any problem because the parts are a lot uh, um, bigger Though, given that they're bigger, there may be more of them because you can put more detail on uh, N scale, uh, excuse me, HO scale car. But uh, this will uh, hopefully this blog will inspire you to go ahead and take a shot and build a kit. It's not as uh, scary or intimidating as you may think it is, or you know, you may actually have uh, do get into it and discover you have more patience than you thought. So, uh, let me go ahead and uh, unpack this baby. And I'll be back in a moment. Right. Well, I got my um, kit unpacked, and uh, in this situation, it is uh, it will be acceptable to leave extra parts out on the table because uh, this particular kit comes with uh, three different uh, troll hatch styles um, I can pick from. So uh, I won't be using all of these. So I'm going to be using these because I think it just kind of looks kind of looks cool, nice diamond shaped. But anyway, of course, you're going to need your kit uh, for materials, and then you're going to need to get some kind of uh, plastic welder for gluing the parts together. Um, this is the kind of glue you want to use. You don't want to use any um, of that gooey airplane glue that will melt the parts. I mean, this will do too if you go overboard, uh, um, if you do use too much of this. but. Uh, that stuff over the long term will cause the plastic to deteriorate. I've done that with other models, trust me. Uh, so this <laughs> this is the stuff you need to get. It's liquid, it's fluid, it flows between the joints, and it sticks together, like it says, super fast, super strong. So uh, maybe several brands of it, but uh, you can get it at your hobby store. And uh, need a paintbrush for applying the glue, um, uh, the welder, and uh, welder comes with its own brush but it's kind of big it's kind of gnarly you know what I mean you can't you know I, I've always had problems trying to control how much I've applied so I don't like using this so I usually I take this out and put it to the side use my regular paintbrush dip it in glue the parts apply the glue and then put this back in so the stuff doesn't evaporate but I, I don't use this brush so you want to get a decent uh, um, bristle brush uh, for applying the glue and uh, need some pliers, um, excuse me, not pliers, tweezers, wrong term, tweezers for uh, holding on to parts. And uh, some of these parts are kind of small, so these are fairly, uh, hopefully you can see that, fairly fine point pliers. You can also get that at your model hobby shop. They're not that expensive, maybe four or five bucks, if I remember correctly. That's how much I spent on it. An exacto knife okay and a box of refills because if you're going to do a lot of kit building you don't want to use the same blade on a whole bunch of kits okay maybe you want to use one blade per couple of kits and then replace it because you want to use the sharpest blade possible uh, for cutting these parts loose you know you don't want to have to especially if they're kind of delicate in this case where I'm using uh, these end scale parts they're kind of delicate so I want this thing to cut 
uh, as well as possible and as quickly as possible so I don't have to exert too much force on it and uh, you know possibly break one of the parts so uh, you can get one of these refills I think these refills go for like 10 bucks contain 15 20 blades I think so uh, and uh, when you change a blade out you don't have to throw it away um, this blade is still good for other purposes, so find a nice safe place to keep these used blades because they're still good for other uh, other needs you may have um, for cutting. So, all right, I've got tweezers, blades, paintbrush, plastic weld, good surface, always important, adequate lighting. Um, I got my layout lights on right now, and then I also have this uh, little light here you can see that I just got a magnifier um, to focus more light in and also so occasionally I do need to use the magnifier to see stuff I ain't a spring chicken anymore and of course the instructions yeah and I know it's kind of a guy thing to try to put something together first and uh, then read the instructions but you may want to just take a look at the pictures and figure out a strategy I mean essentially with the uh, uh, I found with uh, building kits like this, you essentially got to build from the inside out. You uh, apply those parts first that uh, you can't get access to once you apply another part, uh, put on another part. And for example, these uh, air cylinders here go inside the, the frame of the, the uh, car. And then these go outside, wrap around here. Well, you want to have this glued in before you put that one on. So uh, that's obvious but uh, that's something that uh, I know I've done in the past with bottles just plain forgotten so um, just take a look at the instructions first you, you, you won't regret it assuming that the instructions are right but uh, these look uh, fairly good anyway and there's assembly instructions there too alright and uh, of course on a day like this rainy, overcast, perfect modeling weather. Bring the Java. Oops, I finished it all. I gotta tank up. Hold on. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, assemble these trucks and just get them out of the way, get them all together for now so I don't have so many loose parts uh, floating around. And uh, the container that the car came in is always handy for uh, holding on to such things like that. So. Uh, Keep that handy and put your spare parts in there so you don't lose them. Anyway, I'm going to take a coupler and the bottom plate, and the bottom plate here has a pin on it. I'm just going to fit the coupler over like that. All right. Like, like, like that. Okay. I'm kind of holding on to it, the assembly, holding the bottom plate, holding the coupler onto the bottom plate there. I'm going to take the truck and just slide it over the pin right there because there's a hole in the in the truck there we go I've got the pin start to slide it in like that and you can see there's still more I can go I'm gonna take the coupler now and just uh, hold it down on the truck I and mean, push it up so that the uh, springs on there um, are hidden that they're not sticking out in this little gap here I'm gonna go ahead and just push on the plate until it closes up completely. Just like that. That's pretty simple. Okay? That's all there is to it. Now when you do um, the other truck, you want to make sure you have your coupler flipped over, that it's reversed, you know, because uh, what you want is you don't want to have two couplers on your car that are like this. You know, you want to have um, the other one facing in the opposite direction. Now, that's how it's going to be on all your cars, you know, so they hook together. So that's the one thing, that's the one gotcha you got to look out for. And if you do have to make a mistake, it's not too big of a deal to pry the plate off again with a, a little um, a screwdriver or the blade of your X-Acto knife and uh, go ahead and put the plate on, uh, reverse the coupler, switch it around. So, and the wheels, of course, they're if you've been doing model railroading for a while, you are probably very familiar with this ritual of putting wheels back on your truck. It's something that plagues both HO and N scalers. You just put them in, 
like that. There's one, and here's the other. There, just like that. 